Hello, everybody, and welcome to one more webinar. Today, we have a webinar on the role of the physiotherapist in the treatment of the pelvic patients, and we are almost breaking a record uh, of attendees this time. Uh, I think it's the second webinar we have as many prescribed people as we had this time. I'm pretty proud of it. Today's webinar, we have uh, Dr. Oz Zua, who is a PhD, a PhD uh, physiotherapist. He works at the Israeli Center for Treating Vertigo and Balancing Disorder. You are hearing Mariana Rosling Jensen. I'm Education and Training Man Manager at Automatics, and I'm responsible for organizing these uh, webinars. Just for you to know a little bit about uh, tips and tricks and how this works, all participants are muted to reduce background noise. It's possible to ask questions during the session. We have a question box if you see in your right side of the screening. There's a question box you can write there. Now we'll, uh, in the end of the webinar, take some questions and read. If we can't answer all the questions during the time we have for the webinar, we will send you afterwards uh, the answer for your question. If you have any technical problem, please write to me also in the question box. So also we'll have a question uh, during the, the webinar for you, and you can also use your question uh, box to answer. Uh, Dr. Oz, I'm really, really happy to have you here. Welcome. Now I'm going to share your screen so everybody will be able to see your presentation. Just give me two seconds. It's, it's a funny world. I'm in Dubai. Dr. Oz is in uh, Israel. And uh, I organized this webinar from Denmark. So I think we are pretty international. And we have 48 countries uh, represented in this webinar. So. As I said, you should be proud, Dr. Oz. Welcome. Thank you very much. Hello, and welcome to this webinar. I would like to thank Mariana and the Autometrics company for inviting me to share my knowledge with all of you. My name is Dr. Oz Zur. I'm an Israeli physiotherapist with 25 years of hands-on experience. In 1995, I established the Israeli Center for Dis Treating Dizziness and Balance Disorders. I instruct master degree student at Ben Gurion University, focusing on vestibular rehabilitation. I'm involved in a direct study in this field. I assume that you all familiar with the vestibular system and the physiology and the peripheral and central mechanisms. In this webinar, I will talk about the role of the physiotherapist in the rehabilitation process for patients with dizziness and imbalance, and how we can achieve the best rehabilitation for the patient with the tools available to us. Most of the cases that address the physiotherapy clinics suffer from BPPV, but a large number of cases suffer from vestibular hypofunction and are under and misdiagnosed. For this reason, I will focus on this type of diagnosis and rehabilitation. In my opinion, to be good physiotherapist, we focus on rehabilitation for dizzy patient. We need to deepen our knowledge and undertaken uh, the understand the anatomic and physiology of the vestibular system. After examining the diagno and diagnosis of our patient, we must explain their problem to them and the best way to resolve their situation in the short term of over the long term, we have to explain for the patient. A good physiotherapist will keep an open mind during the entire rehabilitation process. Reconsider and altoms. And you remember that the hippocampus and the amygdala also tend to be part of the phenomenon of vestibulopathy. This also many patients 
uh, with dizziness might also suffer from temporary mild cognitive dis decrease and anxiety. Thus, we must be patient with our patient. Last but not least, unlike people with physical injuries, patients with vestibulopathy sometimes look as everything is okay. So you have to believe your patient. They really feel these weird symptoms. In an ideal world, a neurologist specialist would examine the patient and will direct him or her to a physiotherapist with a clear diagnosis for rehabilitation practi uh, practical. This, practically, this does not happen most of the time because the neurologist is not available in all time or in all places. So that's why physiotherapists must expand their knowledge and gain better tools to clearly diagnose the, the patient, to develop an accurate treatment plan for them. In addition to that, the physiotherapist must know the professional red flags. For example, a, a few weeks ago, a 28 years old a patient came to my clinic. I could see that he was unsteady, walking very, very bad. He told me that for almost two months, he suffered from dizziness, vertigo, and imbalance. He went to see his uh, family doctor and who sawed an nystagmus during lying position, diagnosed him as a vertigo patient and referred him to a physiotherapist for vestibular treatment. The, vestibular, the physiotherapist saw the nystagmus during whole pike maneuver, so he assumed that the patient suffered from BPPV and he performed the Apley maneuver to treat the problem. The patient got several treatments but the by the physiotherapist, but his condition got worse. You, of course, as you will see in this video, this man has a VOR deficit. Of course, when you lie down, you will see the deficit as well. Please watch carefully and write at the uh, question box, uh, write to us, is the deficit on the left or on the right side? Look carefully. This is head impulse test. You familiar left side and head impulse test to the right. So as you now understand, both diagnoses were incorrect. First, the family doctor, after the, seeing the nystagmus mistaken, they decided that it's a positional vertigo, while actually it was a vestibular neuritis. Second, the, the physiotherapist treated this patient as a position of vertigo and aggravated his symptoms. It could happen. Okay, so you know which side is the lesion. Mariana, can you say if you have some answer? I, I don't have any answers yet. Uh, I think you have to play the video one more time. Okay, I play the video again. Look carefully. So you saw to the left side and to the right side the head impulse test. First, we should know that immediately after damage occurs to the vestibular system, a spontaneous recovery process will start in the peripheral and the central organs. But this spontaneous process is not enough to fully recover from vestibular dysfunction. Our patient needs specific intervention to become healthy again. So how can we know what is he suffer from? Remember, a complete examination takes an hour or more in a specialist clinic. However, today we will focus on two examinations that will provide you with maximum information. We can easily say today that we, uh, that 
we use habituation, adaptation, and substitution exercises for rehabilitation. All these methods were developed during the last 80 years by leading researchers. So a little bit, uh, dizziness and balance disorder could be described in, as input, process, and output. The input comes from the three peripheral say, sensory systems, the visual, vestibular, and somatosensory. The process happens in the brain, brainstem, cerebellum, and other central areas. And the output is sent to the vestibular ocular reflex to keep this gain stability, and by the vestibular spinal reflex to keep postural stability. Damage can happen in any of these areas or even in more than one. As a physiotherapist, we must relate to all of, the, of them in our examination. In this webinar, we will focus on diagnosis of the VOR and VSR by clinical tools without any technology ads. Although I must say that having a technology tools will give you much more information. As I mentioned before, a complete vestibular examination can take a long time. So in the webinar, I will focus on the two diagnosis uh, tools that you don't need any, any uh, or a little bit. You need only a piece of a styrofoam. For the VOR head impulse test, which developed by Halmagi and Kortoy, you can see the easy clinical edge impulse test that gives so much information about people who suffer from low VOR gain and can be performed anywhere, any place. How you can perform this test? So ask your patient to focus on a static target in front of you while you need to quick turn the head of the patient in a small angle, about 10 or 15 degrees, the movement should be repeated randomly to either left and right four or six times. If the eyes stay focused on the target, it means that the VOR is fine. On the other hand, if the patient's eyes have a fast movement to the opposite direction of the head movement, which is called nystagmus, this means that the VOR is deficit. Okay, so how can we know the side of the lesion? Of course, the nystagmus will move to the healthy side. So let's look at the video again. Once again, pay attention to this nystagmus. The fast movement is to the left side, look. When I turn the head to the left, the nystagmus is to the right. So the left side is the damaged side. Very good. So for the vestibular spinal reflex, a while ago, an old woman entered my clinic and asked me for help. I have a balance problem, she said, and I have several tests, but none of them discovered the natural problem. I do have balance problem, but she's working, she's independent. Most of the common balance test seems to be easy to most independent patients. The time up and go will indicate problems for a, if, if you do it in less than 10 seconds. But most of our patients do the test by less than 10 seconds. So they have problem, but the test will not show it. Most of the patient complete also a functional reach, for example. Most of our patient can move 25 centimeter. In Berg balance test, most of our patient do the test 90 degrees, 90 percent. and a success in the test. 
That's why low silos is a bit better, but require a large space to be performed. And even a stairs case. Actually, these tests, for those reasons, uh, these tests are easy, okay, for the patient and will not indicate the problem. For those reasons, I developed the zoo balance scale. I was asked to speak about the role of physiotherapist. So, uh, I thought to, uh, I move. Yes. In the beginning, we thought to uh, do this test, but it's a little bit difficult to our patient. So, there are also not a head movement in this test. That's why the zoo balance scale is a static and dynamic sensitive function vestibular test. The advantages of the ZBS over this test, it's, it's a sensitive enough to discover even slight deficit. It can perform anywhere and we don't need a large space. It takes only four minutes to done a, by a trained physiotherapist and it requires only a small space. In dynamically test, uh, it's dynamically uh, examine the vestibular system. I did auto again. Okay. okay, so we look at the test now, and we can see that it consists of 10 different conditions, uh, different conditions which are uh, in different uh, stand position. You can also contact uh, okay, sorry. Um, we have different 10 conditions in different uh, stance position. And also you need to do some head movement up and down or uh, eyes closed. The test contains a specially designed uh, styrofoam, a stopwatch, and instruction how to do it. And you can see the address of the article over there. Of course, you can contact me through the email if you would like to have the ZBS kit. The patient will get a score from 0 to 100, which will indicate and identify the patient's balance ability while challenging the vestibular system both statically and dynamically. And also the test will predict the risk for falling. And the literature is uh, from uh, 2006, 16. You can see down the slide. Now let's uh, watch the video showing one of the 10 conditions. Watch this uh, patient. He's asked to stand heel after toes between two chairs to put his hands on his hips and to maintain balance for 10 seconds with eyes closed. Okay, of course, at the test, it's only one of the examination. The second one is to move the head left and right. And as we can see, the intertester and intratester are high. For intertester, we had 65 participants and according to Korenbach Alpha, the level of reliability of their result was very high, as well as in the intra-test reliability. Okay, so we can see that 37, 37 participants will perform the ZBS twice a day, day after day by the same tester, and the reliability level was very high as well. Now that we have the diagnosis, the vestibular ocular reflex, the vestibular spinal reflex, of course it's, you need a long uh, diagnosis and anamnestic, anamnestic to, to know what happened with the patient. We need to choose and build the right rehabilitation program tailored for the patient. The program should contain exercises from three different methodology habituation exercise, adaptation, and substitution. 
let's talk a little bit about the three methodology. So, habituation. As you can see, in 1940, Corton and Cooksey were the first to understand that soldiers who were lying in the bed for weeks after injury had difficulties standing up uh, due to balance deficit. The habituation exercises were very helpful for those soldiers. Forty years later, Nouret and his colleagues developed their version for habituation rehabilitation in Belgium. And in 1995, Shepard and Telia built a series of movement for unilateral vestibular hypofunction. So the exercises are based on the understanding that repeated head, body, and eye movements are important to facilitate and decrease dizziness symptoms. How much, how many, how fast, and how long the exercise should be performed is the main point to reduce symptoms instead of increasing them. From this study of Lecour and his colleague in 1976, we learn that the effect of restricting mobility after transaction of vestibular nerve in baboons dramatically delayed, as you see, the beginning of recovery and lowered the level of the recovery during the first months. Adaptation. In 1994, Susan Herman published the vestibular rehabilitation programs have to include adaptation exercise in order to improve the vestibular ocular reflex, which is called VOR or VOR gain. In other words, to decrease error signal from visual images on the retina during head movement. The exercise she developed includes some guidelines. The adaptation process takes time, means that you need to do it more and more. It couldn't be only once. The improve VOR gain, we need to practice the different textures, meaning that practicing in different environment, at home and the environment. Patient must be challenged up to the limit of ability, and involuntary movement control exercises have better effect on the vestibular system than voluntary movement do. Substitution. David Z described a mechanism of substitution and other strategies, meaning that exercise should be designed to increase alternative strategy for the loss of vestibular function. If the patient's VOR gain is low, his brain uses alternative mechanism to keep the target on the retina. For example, cervicoocular reflex will try to be an additional mechanism for the lack of VOR. The absence of canalo-ocular response might be accomplished by an autolytic ocular responses. A third example of the mechanism that compensate for low VOR gain is the saccadic eye movement, which happened during head trust test among patients with vestibular hypofunction. In our clinic, we use the Zoo Balance Rehabilitation Program, which combines the three methodology mentioned before depending on the patient's diagnosis. I believe that in any rehabilitation program, in order to really address all the aspects of the vestibular patient, the goals should be to facilitate the central nerve system, to adapt the interactive function between three systems, the visual, vestibular, and proper perception, to develop alternative and substitute way to overcome the dysfunction of one system, usually the vestibular, peripheral, and central inputs, to estimate improvement, to reduce symptoms, 
physically. The aim is to improve equilibrium reaction and response and speed, strength postural muscle, improve coordination, increase range of motion, and improve endurance of the heart and lung. Mentally, raising awareness of falls in their con fall, uh, falls and their consequence, recognition of personal mobility and improving concentration and memory. And socially, improving quality of life and receiving support, improve self-esteem from meeting to meeting with the physiotherapist. And emotional, emotionally increasing self-confidence, improving quality of life and reducing anxiety. I was spoke, uh, I was asked to speak to, the, to you about the role of the physiotherapist in vestibular rehabilitation. And I admit that it was hard to fit so much information in this time frame. As a physiotherapist, we always have to substitute a role in the rehabilitation of all kinds of patients, which doesn't only frame in the physical aspects. With vestibular patient, I feel that we have an even greater role as they often don't like patient, they don't like clot patient, and they are labeled with a psychiatric diagnosis. Thus, I strongly believe that we should increase our knowledge and collaborate with other disciplines in order to put our patient in the center. We also uh, spread the word that vestibular rehabilitation has very high success rates and that this patient should see a physical therapist as early as possible in the course of their problem. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Wars. Thank you for preparing this good presentation for us. I have a couple of questions for you. Uh, one of them is, do you have an idea of how many uh, people uh, physiotherapists do uh, heading pulse test, perform the heading pulse test, and how important is that in the test battery that you use? I hear it uh, very uh, difficultly. How many patients? Can you how repeat the how question? How many physiotherapists use the heading pulse in their work? If you know that, and, ah. uh, what is the influence of that? Okay, how many uh, physiotherapists use the head impulse test? It's very important to teach it, and I teach it in every course that I'm coming, because it's very, very important in every diagnosis, but uh, it's, I, don't, I don't have the number, but I just can say that to the clinic, when people come to the clinic, and they usually had the BPPV, the maneuver, even though they have problem with a vestibular uh, VOR deficit. Uh, it seems that a um, few uh, physiotherapists use it as a diagnosis tool. That's why it's important to improve uh, data and uh, teach it. And then there is a question about your video. A question about? Video of the patient. Video. Yes. Is uh, this, uh, just the, let, let me read the question. Is this a case of a Lindsay Hemway syndrome? It's the, the problem is a vestibular ocular reflex. It's a vestibular neuritis from the left side of the ear. It was a left vestibular neuritis. Okay. It's the burger scape. It's the bug scape. A useful, a useful tool for this case. 
It's your scale. Cannot, it's your scale. A, a, a two for this uh, for this kind of patient. Yes, of course. The scale is measuring the level of balance ability for uh, people with vestibular neuritis, but not only. It's for everybody. So each one of us can do the examination and get the level of balance. We have norms for uh, people from 20, 29 to uh, 95. And we know the risk for falling, the cutoff for risk for falling for elderly. In a couple uh, weeks, we will have an article about predicted fall following two years uh, of population uh, of adult, 80 adult people. I have a lot of questions here, Zua. I think what I will do is I'm going to send to you afterwards because of the sound problem. Uh, as you are having so much difficulty to listen to me, I think the best way uh, we get the answer. So I will save the answer and uh, send response to everybody after the webinar. Perfect. No problem. I will answer all the questions. Thank you. And then I want to say thank you very much for being a presenter at our, our, uh, at our webinar. It was uh, a pleasure having you here with us. Um, and uh, we will continue. The other people, I want to say thank you for participating, for all the participants. And uh, there will be then a video of the presentation. And uh, if you have subscribed to, to, the, to the webinar, you will get an email with a link so you can watch the, the video afterwards. Thank you, everybody. We'll have a Thank new, you very much. We have a new webinar in two weeks. And again, it's going to be on vestibular. And how can we establish a, a clinic? And how do you prioritize the tests that you can do? Thank you, Oz. Really nice to have you Thank here. you very much. Bye, everybody. Thank you for inviting me. Bye-bye.